Hi friends, I'm Jabakriba Roslin. I'm happy to welcome you all to at another video from my channel. Today's video is from the subject operations management. In operations management, we are going to see a topic related to scheduling in operations. Yes, the exact topic we are going to see is theory of constraint or theory of bottlenecks. Without wasting time, let us get into the video. As we all know, no change can ever be stronger than its weakest link. Similarly, every system must have a constraint that limits its output. In simple, the theory of constraint is a process improvement methodology that emphasizes the importance of identifying system constraint or bottleneck. Yes, it is important to identify what is broken to fix it. The theory of constraint is a management philosophy developed by Eliyahu M. Goldrack. In his publication in 1984, The Goal, A Process of Ongoing Improvement, Goldratt has first proposed the concept of theory of constraint. According to Goldratt, organizations can achieve their goal by identifying and leveraging a system's constraint. A constraint is something that limits your performance and this theory assumes that there is always at least one constraint, if not more. For example, when we have a pain in our teeth, we are unable to intake anything and sometimes can't even sleep properly. But when the dentist diagnoses and finds the teeth that is affected and gives the necessary treatment, we feel relaxed. The dentist never strengthens the good teeth, rather he gives treatment to the weakest teeth. The same concept is highlighted by the theory of constraint. What is a bottleneck? A bottleneck is a point of congestion in a production system that stops or severely slows the system or the progress. The bottlenecks may be short-term and long-term. Short-term bottlenecks are temporary and caused by a labor shortage. Long-term bottlenecks are more incorporated into the system itself and characterized by inefficient machinery or processes. Take for example, think about a place where a road became narrow or a place where there is often a lot of traffic causing the traffic to slow down or stop. In this case, if the traffic is caused by a wrong move of one vehicle, then it is a short term bottleneck. Whereas usually traffic slow down at this place due to a narrow pass, then it is a long term bottleneck. As we are clear with the basic terms related to constraint, and bottlenecks. Now let us move on to the main topics to understand theory of constraint in a better way. We are going to see three main topics. The first topic is the five focusing steps. The second topic is throughput accounting. The third topic is theory of constraint thinking process and philosophy. Let us see one by one. Once Dr. Goldratt, the founder of the theory of constraint was challenged by an aggressive reporter to summarize theory of constraint in a single sentence. Yelly replied, never mind a sentence. I will explain in a single word, focus. That is where we got the five focusing step. This is also widely known as process of ongoing improvement. Pugi for short serves as guidepost for driving ongoing improvement. The first step is to identify the constraint. To improve the system or to smoothen the flow of the process, the first thing we have to do is break the system into small activities and tasks and identify which activity or task is acting as a constraint in the system. We don't have to broaden the entire road to smoothen the traffic. Instead, it's just enough to widen the narrow portion in the road. The second step is to exploit the constraint. Let me tell an example first. Suppose we have planned to give orange juice for the guests who are going to come tomorrow. We have bought oranges expecting that the number of guests would be 20. But the number of guests came is more than 20, maybe around 25 to 30. In that case, we don't need to go to the market for buying additional oranges. Instead, we can squeeze the maximum of the oranges available to serve them. 
Likewise, in an organization, when we have identified the constraint, it is not necessary to replace the constraint. Instead, we can try to leverage the constraint to get overall equipment effectiveness. The third step is subordinate everything to the constraint. In the previous step, we concentrate on getting maximum out of the constraint by leveraging it. Whereas in this step, you are going to concentrate on how the non-constrained elements around the constraint can support the constraint to do better. Let us assume a baby is a constraint and the mom is a non-constraint. The mom encourages and trains the baby to walk at the same time lifts and supports the baby whenever and wherever the baby cannot walk by its own. Likewise, we should look for all possible ways where the constraint can be supported by subordinating the non-constraint element to it. The fourth step is elevate the constraint. In the previous two steps, we tried to get the maximum out of, out of the constraint with internal sources without any additional investment. Once we have made the necessary effort to bring the optimum out of the available things, next we have to focus on additional investment that could support the constraint to do better. The last step is prevent inertia from becoming the constraint. That is, after making effort to elevate one constraint, there is always a possibility of finding a new one. The theory of constraint is not a one-time process. It is a tool of constraint continuous improvement where we always find the weakest in the group and elevate it. That's why it is known as process of ongoing improvement. Throughput accounting. Throughput is the number of units that pass through a process during a period of time. Throughput in operations is the number of units that can be produced by a production process within a certain period of time. For example, if 800 units can be produced during an 8-hour shift, then the production process generate throughput of 100 units per hour. Throughput can be increased by enhancing the productivity of the bottleneck operations that is constraining production, like purchasing an additional machine or extending the shift. Let me tell it in a simple way. We all might have had an experience of having food in a street restaurant at least once in our lifetime. Sometimes the crowd may be less and sometimes there may be a huge crowd. There won't be a constraint when the crowd is less, but when the crowd increases, they have a constraint of meeting a demand. When the crowd increases, the person cooking may switch on the additional stoves so that he can cook on multiple dishes at a time. Throughput accounting in simple is taking into account consideration only the truly variable cost. In general, the variable cost include direct material, direct labor and direct expenses. But in case of the restaurant, we cannot pay the person cooking based on the number of dishes prepared by him. Instead, we can pay him a fixed amount for the day. Thus, we can leverage the total cost by bringing the labor charges under fixed head. Hence, the truly variable cost will not include direct labor charges. The last topic is theory of constraint, thinking process and philosophy. These are integrated problem solving tool based on rigorous cause and effect logic. They enable us to create breakthrough solutions by identifying and challenging and correcting and examining assumptions. When we are serious about ongoing improvement, they help answer fundamental questions such as what to change. We may use various problem solving tools like QFT, fishbone diagram, affinity diagram to identify exactly what is to be changed. The next question to be answered is what to change to. That is by changing the existing thing, what, we, what are we going to replace or fix in that particular place? It is not only necessary to remove the unnecessary thing, it is also equally important to replace it with the correct thing. And finally, we should find answer for how to cause the change. The transition periods are always crucial. When we are changing an element, we should be careful that the process of change doesn't affect the things that need not to be changed. Hence, immense care should be taken to identify the way in which we are going to make the change. So friends, 
I have tried my level best to give you an overview about the theory of constraint. Thank you for watching this video. Share the video with your friends and contacts who may also find it useful. Subscribe and check my channel for more such useful videos. Thank you.